Thank you very much, Sanstri uh, Michael Yu. Uh, let me begin uh, by thanking Professor Wu Wing Tai for inviting me to speak uh, at this conference. When uh, I agreed uh, to participate, I actually did not know what the theme of the conference was about and what the topic for the discussion in this session was about. So I sat down to do something which uh, I'm quite familiar with, which is not economics, but more uh, a discussion on political and security issues. And I'll, I'll try to link uh, this to economic development uh, in the region. Now, I must say that first, I'm not an economist. Secondly, I have not written a book. <laughs> now, I propose to, to discuss economic development and regional peace and security with emphasis to uh, the countries in Southeast Asia, countries which I'm more familiar with, having been involved uh, in the ASEAN circuit. And I'm very happy that uh, the former ASEAN Secretary General, Ambassador Hong Kang Yong, is here with us today. Uh, if one were to look at Southeast Asia itself, geographically, we know that Southeast Asia is a collection of countries that are essentially members of ASEAN. But there is, of course, the possibility of looking at Timor-Leste, which is uh, now in discussion with ASEAN about uh, becoming a member of the organization, and also PNG, which has been an observer of ASEAN for a number of years already. But uh, I think largely when one talks about uh, Southeast Asia, the uh, impression is always that Southeast Asia is ASEAN since uh, the last 40 something years ago. Now ASEAN as a regional organization and grouping, of course, as we know, was established in 1967 and to many people, ASEAN seems to have been moving rather slowly. But uh, over the years, uh, one can see that ASEAN has made tremendous achievements uh, in, uh, in terms of moving the region of Southeast Asia towards regional integration. Uh, I need not uh, remind you of the uh, of the circumstances that were there in Southeast Asia in 1967 that led to the uh, establishment of ASEAN, simply to say that, uh, of course, prior to 1967 and the adoption of the Bangkok Declaration in August of that year, uh, there was confrontasi between Malaysia and Indonesia, there was uh, the war in, in uh, Vietnam and Indochina, and Southeast Asia as a whole was essentially a cockpit of competition among the major powers. Uh, to see how ASEAN had moved uh, rather slowly, as some would say, the first summit was only held in 1976, with it, whereby the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, as well as the Bali Concord, were adopted. And the six, or rather the five ASEAN countries at that time, agreed to the establishment of the ASEAN Secretariat. And of course, ASEAN uh, moved on into the 1980s and uh, uh, with uh, some, some uh, turbulence also in the region, largely in the, uh, in, in, uh, the occupation of Cambodia by Vietnam, for which ASEAN, the ASEAN uh, uh, countries were uh, very much involved in uh, getting Vietnam to leave Cambodia. But uh, as uh, we can see, by the 1990s, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and uh, subsequently Myanmar had also joined ASEAN to become 10 ASEAN member countries now. Uh, in the decade of the 2000s, some major landmarks would be the 
adoption of the Declaration on the Establishment of the ASEAN Community, or the Bali Concord II, and subsequently the adoption of the ASEAN Charter, which, sub, which made ASEAN a ruled-based organization, uh, as opposed to a loose organization, as many would have uh, referred to it in the past. Now, the question I would like to pose here is, would the Southeast Asian countries be able to achieve growth and development without ASEAN? And the next question, would, would ASEAN actually facilitate or hinder growth and development in Southeast Asia? The next question would be, would integration accelerate growth and development? And what is ASEAN's role as promoter, facilitator, and grantor of regional peace and security and economic development in ASEAN. Now, in, for this, I think it is important for us to look at the issues of regional peace and security that have prevailed in the past, but I'd, I'd rather like to focus on the present. What are the issues that are of concern to us. Now, definitely major power relations and perhaps to some extent rivalry is a major issue that we need to look at. The question of the rise of China to the east, the rise of India to the west of ASEAN, and the US pivot and rebalancing in the area. These are important issues that would have an impact, I believe, on the, the development in the region. There is, of course, the perennial issues uh, that exist in the Korean Peninsula. This needs to be resolved. Uh, we have the issues of territorial disputes and overlapping claims, especially in the maritime areas of Southeast Asia, as well as Northeast Asia, in particular in the South China Sea and the East China Sea. Uh, these issues appear to have the tendency of uh, moving towards or escalating towards dan dangerous levels, especially in the context of what has been happening in the East China Sea, whereby China had declared the air defense zone, or EDIS, uh, and also the problem of uh, Chinese assertion of its uh, naval power in Southeast Asia. There are, of course, the Northeast Asia security concerns, the problems between China and Japan, the problems between Korea and Japan. Now, how would this affect not only Northeast Asia, but also Southeast Asia? as a whole. Uh, besides that, I believe one should not discount the non-traditional security issues, diseases, global health, pandemic. Uh, we had SARS uh, the, and other scares uh, in the past, and I believe these are issues that would preoccupy governments uh, in institutions, uh, not only in this region, but also throughout the world in the future. There are other issues, water resources, for example, that need to be seriously uh, debated uh, for solutions to be found at some point in the future. There is climate change as a major issue of security, in a way. Uh, we see it out there. Uh, I. Uh, came in from Mumbai this morning, and uh, you know when we landed at uh, KLIA, you could hardly see the planes on the uh, uh, in the parking base in the terminal building. Uh, the plane was, as the plane was taxiing, I could only see the top of the of the. Uh, air control tower uh, of KLI-2. The rest of KLI-2 had disappeared. Uh, I hope it's still there because the opening will be 
uh, done soon. Now, I think another issue of uh, concern should be natural disasters. And this, as we know, would have an impact on development uh, or economic development in countries in the region. Another issue that uh, has given rise to concerns is internal political developments in various countries, be it Thailand, Cambodia, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and elsewhere. Uh, and another issue that I would put forward is the rise of nationalistic fervor, fervor parochialism that leads to tensions. One can see this in the case of China and Japan, for example. Uh, and this exists not only at the, at the level of leaders and officials, it, also, it is also there among the people. And such tensions could create unnecessary problems uh, for the future. Now perhaps, given all this, I should talk a little bit about the regional architecture that exists in the region, uh, be it economic or political. When that one looks at regional, the regional architecture that has developed thus far, there's always the uh, impression that it is something that is uh, ASEAN-led and ASEAN-driven. And uh, I believe that it is a fact, it is true, and to, th to that extent, this has in many ways helped in the evolution of the uh, kinds of economic development that is achieved in the region, not only in the individual countries, but also collectively in the region as a whole. What are these uh, uh, what are the structures and frameworks that uh, make up this regional architecture? Uh, we have frameworks, structures, and processes that range from the security to the economic, as well as those that uh, promote economic and uh, trade cooperation. We have, for example, the ASEAN Regional Forum, which largely deals with uh, security. This is now being supplemented by the ASEAN Defense Ministerial Meeting, uh, which is further uh, improved to become the ASEAN Defense Ministerial Forum Plus to include the dialogue partners of ASEAN. We have the East Asia Forum. There, is, there are also the bilateral and multilateral uh, US-led alliances and other arrangements. There, are, there is the six-party talks that deal with the issues in the Korean Peninsula. On the economic side, we have APEC, we have ASEAN Plus, the ASEAN Plus arrangements, which involve ASEAN and its dialogue partners. Then there are, of course, the various FTAs involving ASEAN and uh, the dialogue and strategic partners. There are also the comprehensive economic uh, partnership agreements. And uh, as we know, there, is the, there are negotiations that are being uh, carried out now on the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, as well as the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership programs. Now, as I've said, uh, in most of these instances, with the exception of APEC and the various bilateral or multilateral alliances, they are ASEAN-led, ASEAN-driven, uh, with emphasis on ASEAN centrality, and as some might say, it, with ASEAN in the driver's seat. Now the question is, what are the underpinnings for this? 
If one looks at the history of ASEAN, the development of the dialogue partnerships between ASEAN and the other countries has given the opportunity for the group uh, of Southeast Asian countries as a whole to develop certain powers and influence uh, to, to gain the confidence of their partners to the extent that that has helped in promoting regional cooperation in the region. Now, as I've said, I've put across the question earlier, what if ASEAN is not there? Will the countries be able to develop the way they have been? Uh, Professor Perkins has made some comparisons between Indone Indonesia and the ROK, for example. I think it is important also to look at the various member countries of ASEAN as to how they have developed over the years. Now, I would argue that ASEAN has helped in developing or evolving peace and stability in the region to the extent that it, in many ways, has helped to contribute to the individual development of the countries concerned. There is still a lot that needs to be done in respect of regional uh, cooperation and integration, but as we can see, ASEAN is now moving towards the uh, development, or rather is moving towards the, the uh, establishment of the ASEAN community by the end of 2015, uh, whereby it is not just a question of the development of an ASEAN economic community, but it cuts across the board, ASEAN political and security community, as well as the ASEAN social cultural community. But of course, there are still many challenges that uh, would be faced there. If one looks at the ASEAN economies at the moment, for example, uh, they, continue, they continue to register robust growth and I'm, I'm looking at actually figures that are provided by the OECD. Um, they are every, and the, the uh, forecast by the OECD is that the ASEAN economies would grow an average of 5.4% between the years 2014 to 2018. And uh, this compares to 5.5% for the years 2000 and zero, uh, uh, the year 2007, but these figures uh, somehow exclude uh, Brunei and Myanmar. But one can see that uh, individually, because the levels of growth are, are not quite similar, uh, the CLMV countries are expected to grow much, fast, much uh, faster than uh, the rest of ASEAN. Now, would the ASEAN-centered regional cooperation and integration reinforce national development efforts? Now, I believe that they would, because those frame frameworks and processes, the initiatives that have been uh, uh, that have come about over the years, have, in many instances, worked. Be, be it uh, currency swap arrangements, be it the Chiang Mai initiative. Uh, there are also the trade uh, arrangements that uh, may not be to the full satisfaction of everyone, but they indeed would have worked. But of course, uh, in, in, in a way, for the future, they would help in, uh, uh, in a number of instances, uh, among which will be the expansion of the market. Uh, if we remember, Dr. Mahade used to say that we should think in terms of prospering our neighbors. Uh, and uh, the basic assumption here is that if you help your neighbors and they become rich, then you can sell your products to them. Let me see, uh, let me just go a little bit into the challenges that I see would be faced by uh, 
the economies in Southeast Asia uh, in order for them to grow and maybe to, to a large extent also to move beyond the middle income levels. These uh, challenges would be as follows. There's the issue of the ge geography of the region itself. Uh, we are not homogeneous. Uh, there are, of course, varying levels of development. That's why in the case of ASEAN, it is important for the grouping to put emphasis on narrowing the development gap between uh, the uh, more developed members of the organization uh, and the four CLMV countries, Cambodia, Laos, uh, Myanmar, and Vietnam. And in this regard, of course, there have been many efforts uh, uh, carried out. Uh, not least is the initiative for ASEAN integration, uh, but there's, there are also efforts that are being carried out by the ASEAN uh, partners. Another issue will be infrastructure and connectivity. Thanks to Michael Yeo was one, one of those who was on the panel, high-level panel, that discussed ASEAN connectivity. Now, the problem perhaps would be the, the funds that would be needed to develop the infrastructure in the region. Uh, we know that uh, China, for example, had uh, set aside a sum of money, I believe it was $10 million for the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund. There are, of course, other funds that have been established by the uh, dialogue partners, but eventually, perhaps, what is needed here, given the limited public resources that are available, is a credible private, public-private partnership programs that could help to develop infrastructure within ASEAN as well as to develop connectivity. Then there are, of course, new sources of growth that would have to be looked at. And uh, I think one important uh, factor here that one has to pay attention to is human capital, which would go together with better health, better education, the need to develop entrepreneurship. Uh, challenges that may face the countries in ASEAN for the future as are uh, in a way similar to what is being faced by uh, Japan and Korea, which is an aging population. Then we have the problem of depletion of natural resources. And one important thing is that do you develop by neglecting the environment or do you give enough emphasis to uh, protecting the environment? Now, some final words since the bell has rung. I would say that uh, the Prospects look good for the region of Southeast Asia, and uh, Southeast Asia can certainly grow together with Northeast Asia because the, the Northeast Asian countries themselves are, uh, are cooperating with the countries of Southeast Asia individually as well as through ASEAN. And uh, in this venture, I think if we can move together uh, with a clear purpose, then obviously there is hope for at least some of the countries in South Asia, Southeast Asia to move up the chain uh, to go beyond middle income, as has been the aspiration for the government here in Malaysia. Now, if one were to look at uh, the various policies that have been adopt, adopted by the governments, the 10 governments in Southeast Asia, one can see that there is emphasis on human capital development, 
education, SME development, uh, agriculture, poverty, natural resource management, infrastructure. And for Myanmar and Vietnam, very interestingly, they are very identical, private sector development, human resource development, and financial sector development. These are the major themes, I would say. Uh, I'm picking up again from a report by the OECD. But what is interesting also is that I do not think, and I, I, I believe very much in this, that these individual countries do not coordinate among themselves when they adopt their national plans. So this is, again, another major challenge uh, in terms of ASEAN integration. Would there be a time when national governments would be able to look into the examples of the other member governments in, terms, in, in respect of uh, developing their national policies for development? With those uh, uh, thoughts, I uh, would say that uh, the prospects will be bright for as long as we are able to resolve the security issues that I've mentioned earlier. Thank you very much.